Let's have him record now. Let me just make sure it's working. Yeah, it's recording now. Right. Hi, guys. It's Lee Ashby here for BSMA Motocross Memories. And I've uh, got a fantastic interview for you, for you tonight on uh, Skype. I've got AMA legend, Mr. Mike Alessi. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Not too bad. Uh, I'm not struggling with the heat as much as it is with you. <laughs> Yeah, it's hot here in Florida. It's uh, it's it's been muggy and humid, and yeah. I think in Celsius, I'm pretty sure it's like 35 or almost close to 40 Celsius. Bloody yeah, that's pretty pretty hot going. We don't have normally that have that problem in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has been nice. It has, it has been nice here, but not that nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay then. So you're ready for these questions? Um, yeah. Number one I've got is how did you get into motocross, and what is your earliest memory of the sport we all love? I got started at three years old. My dad got me a motorcycle, and basically that's how it all kind of started. And just going to the local tracks in the area and racing in California. My dad would announce at the uh, Paris Raceway, and in exchange, the the track would let me race and compete for obviously for free. But my dad did the announcing for the the race on race day, so that's pretty much how I got started. And my dad was a big part of it that's cool um next one i've got is what riders did you look up to and idolize when you were young and did you actually get to race any of your heroes of course you know my heroes growing up was mcgrath you know watching him at supercross and then being able to race him at one super little supercross race in fresno which was pretty cool and i was able to beat him and after the race was over i went over to his pit and i got his jersey and at first, he was kind of reluctant to give it to me because I, I had to slam him and pass him to, to win the race. And uh, after the race, he was like, you need to learn some respect for your elders. And I'm just like, OK, cool. I don't care. Can I still get your jersey? And uh, yeah, for sure, racing him was number one biggest idol and being able to battle and race him. Did that feel pretty surreal for you at that point? Yeah, I was only 15 years old and, you know, just Crazy. a young kid that yeah. That didn't care about anybody, just about winning and working hard. That's the that's way to do it. Um, in your uh, AMA day, who would you consider to be your closest rivals and who did you enjoy racing the most during that period? Uh, for sure, you know, Villapoto was my number one rival through amateurs and into the pros and, uh, you know, throughout our whole career. And still, we're still battling to this day. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just been one of those guys that I can never get away from. And, uh, yeah, he's been my toughest for sure, and I definitely probably one of my best racing uh, competitors that I always liked racing against was James Stewart. He uh, could just do some crazy things on a motorcycle, and yeah. like uh, 2013 at uh, Muddy Creek, the second moto, he he's battling with me, and I go battling back with him, and I pass him, and we come over this tabletop, and he literally scrubs so hard. And I'm in the air, like seeing a motorcycle fly by me underneath me. And I'm just like, <laughs> you were behind me and you're landing before me. It's just crazy. it's just crazy the things that he could do on a motorcycle. Yeah. I remember your uh, battles with Philip Hurt. They were classic. And obviously they did get quite controversial a few times as well, didn't they? A few bar banging yeah. going on. And I remember yeah, a couple of you taking just, each other out a few times. Hey, at the end of the day, we're just two dudes trying to win and do whatever yeah. it takes. And at the end of the yeah. day, like Carmichael says, it doesn't got to look pretty. It doesn't got to be clean or smooth. It just get the job done. 100%. 100%. I like that. Okay, next one. What is your favorite uh, race number and has it changed throughout the years? Or was there any particular reason for wanting it or having it in the first place and how did it come about? I got number 800 since I was about seven years old, and I went to uh, the Mini Olympics in, in World Mini, which is in Vegas, and my number was eight at the time. That had always been my favorite number, and, and I couldn't run number eight because I didn't race there the year before. You had to be top 10 to keep a number eight, okay. so he said number 80, and they said it was already taken, and my dad's like, screw it. We'll put 800, <laughs> and if you, you can fit it on the side of the motorcycle on the side plate you can run it so i've had it ever since then and it's kind of like my trademark number you yeah, know it's yeah. uh, something that stuck with me my whole career and you know i definitely wouldn't want to get rid of it yeah 100 that's cool um next one i've got is uh on a what is your favorite uh, least favorite track on the motocross or supercross side what was the least favorite um uh, least favorite was probably um maybe unadilla just because of all the rocks and okay yeah 
thankfully in my career, I always got pretty good starts. At mm. Unadilla, I didn't ever really seem to get good starts. So I was always getting pelted with rocks, and there, you know, the rocks are pretty big. So I would say for sure that's the the worst one of the circuit. And favorite one for sure was always Glen Helen being 25 minutes from my house in California is so close. And, you know, growing up and being in Southern California, that was my home track. And, you know, for the Nationals, it was, it was just like a, an advantage for me. And, you know, nothing can replace the Glen Helen with those big, nasty downhills and the breaking bumps. And yeah. you go all the way to the top of Mount St. Helens and the, it, the, the hill is like steep, like almost in vertical. And it's like, you got to have some balls to be able to go up and down those hills. And yeah. that was probably my favorite track. What um what on Supercross terms? What uh, was a favorite and least favorite in that? Was there a particular? Well, Supercross tracks are always different. As far yeah. as like stadiums, though, I always enjoyed racing at Anaheim. Being in California, yeah. the buzz and just the atmosphere of the the first Anaheim, the first Supercross of the yeah. year. You got fifty thousand people that are just excited because Supercross is back, and it's been you know three or four months since the nationals had ended so everybody's just excited to watch supercross and to come out get the whole shot lead those first couple laps in front of all of my fans and you know family and friends that live close in southern california that was always my favorite that's cool um what has been your favorite racing gear that you've worn uh to date as in like particular reasons you like that kit helmets that sort of the whole get up um i've worn a lot of different gears in my career and you know honestly it would say this liette stuff that i'm wearing right now head to toe you know with the boots they're probably the best boots i've ever worn in my career yeah. so i would say i would say the liette stuff that i'm using right now at the moment okay cool um do you, did you have any superstitions or anything that you uh had to do on race days anything specific on race days nope no nothing nope i'm not that kind of guy that's, that's a good thing, though, because quite a few guys get quite hung up on some really weird stuff as well, don't they? I've been speaking to quite a few. Mm. <laughs> they, they literally can't dress left to right and all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, that, that means they're mentally just kind of weird. <laughs> 100%. Right, I've got you. Where did you actually race as a schoolboy? Uh, did you tr- actually travel much as a youngster? Can you sort of elaborate on that experience as a youth schoolboy rider? school schoolboy as in like the 125 class you mean as in like you know uh, 80s 60s that sort of you know youth. oh yeah well, yeah yeah so we traveled all around the country and going from you know loretta lens to the mini olympics all the way to florida for the uh, you know the the florida winter series races i mean we traveled all across the country to go racing when we were kids for sure yeah um i've put all riders get injuries. Have you had any that you feel that have really held you back over the years to achieve certain uh, racing goals and why? Well, I mean, for me, you know, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more experienced and smarter with the way I train and listening to my body. And when I feel tired, you know, I take a day off. And if I'm feeling good and I'm ready to go hammer down, I'm going to go for a bike ride and, you know, do my work in the gym or whatever it takes to be competitive and be ready. Your body is a big indicator because it will always talk to you and tell you how you're feeling. And if things are not clicking and you don't feel good or you wake up tired, you got to listen to your body and say, hey, you know, I need a day off and just be honest with yourself because that's that's how injuries and crashes happen when you try to force something that is not there and your body is telling you, hey, you know what, I just don't have it today. Very wise words there. Um, next one I've got. If you hadn't become a professional racer, what career path do you think you would have chosen and why? Uh, <laughs> man, I couldn't even answer that, honestly. Uh, maybe like basketball or football, but I'm a little too too small for football, so I probably get killed in, in yeah. basketball. I can't shoot worth a crap. So, I mean, uh, I definitely probably, sport, definitely some sort of sport. Yeah, I'm an active person, so it's just my mentality. I just like to be outside side and doing stuff and just working hard okay cool uh what's been your most memorable race or meeting to date would you say and why does it still stick in your memory even today well i've had a lot of a lot of good races in my career and i mean as if as far as like pinpointing one of them would be probably my 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 favorite day or you know perfect day would be uh freestone 2009 okay i got uh, both hole shots led every single lap that day literally didn't have to pull any tear offs and uh you know won the second moto by i think they said like 40 or 45 seconds uh, over chad reed and uh andrew short and all yeah. the rest of the guys that, that second moto at freestone and just uh 
you know, just one of those days where everything clicked and went perfect and fastest in practice, got both hole shots, led every lap and went 1-1. Perfect day then, perfect day. Who, who would you say were your closest friends in and around the paddock and how easy is it to block out that friendship once the gate drops? Well, one of my best friends that I've had in this this career that I've had in racing and professional has probably been Vince Freeze. And, you know, we've been friends for so long that, uh, you know, we're almost like brothers now in a sense. Like, I got his back, he's got my back. And, uh, you know, we're just really good close friends. And when we're on the track, you know, it's that old saying, man, when the gate drops, the bullshit stops. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we don't really think about being friends. And, you know, if he's in a qualifying or transfer position or, you know, in a, in a, in a podium position, I'm going to clean his ass out if I have to, to take <laughs> that podium. If it's for a win, man, hey, yeah. at the end of the day, you know, win's a win. So, um, yeah, I'd say Vince Free is probably my, uh, my closest friend. Okay, cool. Um, how important is it to have a mechanic you trust in the program? How much of a difference does it have in a knowledgeable team that understands everything with you and how the way you ride? Well, like with Moto Concepts, like I, I've always had great mechanics and Moto Concepts has some of the best ones in the paddock and, you know, they work hard. They know me and how I like my things on my motorcycle with my bars or levers and, yeah. you know, the foot pedal brake. It's like they small know details, what I do. Yeah. The small, the simplest details and yeah. they know it. So, yeah, having a good mechanic is key in this sport and in this industry to keep, you know, not just the rider safe, but at the same time, like at the end of the day, like the mechanic, it's it's really their bike and we're just the rider that's privileged to ride their motorcycle that they work on. Yeah. So they put a lot of, you know, infrastructure and, and trust in putting that motorcycle together. And when the rider is on it, that it's going to hold together and, you know, get you to the finish line. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you have any actual sort of regrets in your career? As in, were there any meetings you've wished you could rerun, uh, thought you should have done better or won, or even a bike that you've ridden for a season that you wish you hadn't, or a team that you wish you hadn't really? So, in? so it's kind of like an interesting question that you have here. Because mm. so when I was at my perfect race where I went 1-1 at Freestone, I was at, you know, would be considered the highest of highs. Yeah. And two days later, I went to High Point to do a press conference thing, you know, press ride for Davy Coombs at High okay. Point. Okay. And I ended up breaking my kneecap that day, and the championship was over. And at that point of the series, it was the third round, and I had a 40-point lead after the third round, which in today's terms is, like, unheard of. You would never hear of a 40-point lead after the third round. Yeah. So, you know, to be at my highest of highs and two days later, you know, less than 48 hours, be at my lowest of lows and realize the championship is over and millions of dollars that uh, I could have made in bonus money and championship bonus money. So, mm -hmm. you know, to watch all that, you know, go out the window was uh, quite tough. Yeah. Definitely tough. And uh, Yeah. Even just thinking about it now, it just, you know, almost like puts chills on my arm just thinking about, yeah. you know, how bad of a decision that was that day. And yeah you have to live with it that's uh, you know life goes on yeah okay um can you tell us a funny story from your racing day memories uh i don't really have any funny ones <laughs> this sport is so serious it's there's not too many funny stories <laughs> A lot of the guys have been mentioning as well about uh wrecking rental cars and things like that did you get into any of that <laughs> uh no no, I was always professional. I come to the come to the race, do my job, and go home. And I got, you know, as I'm, I've gotten older, I've smarter, wiser, and you know, I got a wife and a and, and a baby, so like, you know, I got priorities that you know I got to take care of, and you yeah. know, a family to come home to. You know, rent and wrecking rental cars will put you in the hospital and maybe even put you, uh, you know, possibly sure. dead. So yeah. I, I stayed away from that kind of stuff. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Um, if you were to summarize your racing style in three words, what would you say it was? <clears throat> um, I would say fast, uh, smooth, and the last one would be kind of like a two word, but worked hard. I always worked hard in my career, and that's why I have no regrets. Like, I know at the end of the day, like, when my racing career is done and over with, like, yeah. I have no regrets because I gave it everything I had, and whether I won or lost, it, it was the best that I could do. And in this sport, you know, maybe I didn't win a whole bunch of championships like some other guys. And, uh, you know, things just didn't fall. The cards didn't fall the right way. Like, 
it is what it is. It's part of life. But I know when I go to sleep at night, I'm happy with the man that I am. And I see in the mirror and I'm, I know that I can go to bed saying, you know what? I had a good life and I worked hard. Fair play, fair play. Um, what would you consider your biggest strengths to be as a racer? And were there any areas that you try to address and work on more than others? Well, obviously, my starts were always my best and my whoops were my worst. You know, just as a young age, I didn't really ever work in whoops and supercross and stuff like that. So I struggled in my pro career in the whoops where, you know, all around the rest of the track, I'd try to make that time up and then I'd lose it in the whoops. So, yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. If there was a particular race that you could uh, re-race tomorrow in your full prime, where and what would it be, do you think? Um... Uh, so I don't know. That's a tough one, man. I, I would uh, I would always like to go back and race Dungey again at Washougal like we did in 2012. We were going literally just bar to bar, just that whole freaking moto. And to just be able to go into that race and see it again and go battle it out and try to get that overall, that second moto where, you know, I made a couple of mistakes and let them get away. You know, that could have been an overall that day. And that, that was pretty cool. We were going at it and the crowd was so into it. That first moto, like literally the whole crowd is just buzzing. They're yeah. hanging over the edge <laughs> of the fence and just cheering and going crazy. And it's like that energy Dungy and I were feeding off of. Yeah. And as the crowd was getting into it, we were getting into it. And we were just pushing that much harder. So that, that was, was pretty, cool, man. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, what do you feel, feel is your best achievement in motocross? or supercross to date in your career as your career goals changed much since you started out in the first place well the goal is always to try to win and you know like i said you know sometimes it doesn't fall that way and you know mm. the cards don't happen but you know and like i said in this career you work hard you do the best you can and you have no regrets and you know i can't really pinpoint one or better than the other yeah okay cool how did you find the transitioning from motocross to supercross racing and did you do specific adjustments to your style and things like that in order to compete in both? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, motocross and supercross are two totally different entities. You know, with supercross, you got the whoops and rhythms and jumps and everything's tight. So, yeah. you know, it takes a different riding style and you have to have a different bike setup. So, you know, everything is different from one to the other. Yeah, for sure. Um were there any riders uh, that you didn't really enjoy racing with and guys that you sort of didn't enjoy racing with at all, really? Josh Grant, for sure. What was that for? Because he freaking broke my kneecap when I tried to come back. Oh, it was actually him first. that did it? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. he just, it was a first lap, not even halfway through the first lap, and he just comes in and I just, just fully just takes me out and breaks my kneecap and you know, I tried to stay in the season and try to, like, salvage some points. And just the way that he went away, went about doing what he did to me in that first moto at, at Lakewood in 2009 was was completely effed up. And, and uh, you know, he, he just he saw his opportunity and he just wiped me out. And that was so dirty and uh, so intentional. And the AMA did nothing about it. And that, that's where, you know things were not right that should have been addressed by the ama yeah. and you didn't even get a fine or anything so, so it rankles it rankles a bit that one <laughs> yeah i mean just you know did you, you get on with the guy in general did you get on with him in general or is that nope. just obviously nope. things change from we've, then on <laughs> we've always had problems since we were in amateurs because he grew up in southern california and he was about two years older than me so i always raced him okay and uh yeah even when we were in amateurs we hated each other then so it's just one of those guys where I hate being around. I don't want to be around him and uh, and kind of vice versa. Okay, cool. We're just going to hold that a second for part one and then we'll be back in a minute. 